Today, I am going to be putting every single starter Pokemon head to head in a tournament to decide which one is the best. Now, our first matchup here is Squirtle versus Chespin. Now, I personally picked Chespin in my Pokemon X and Y playthrough. Squirtle, on the other hand, I didn't. Now, let me preface this entire tournament by saying that all my decisions here are personal preference, and this has nothing to do with competitive viability. Now, with that being said, Squirtle is such an iconic Pokemon, and Chespin is just kind of forgettable. It is cute, don't get me wrong, but come on, be for real, Squirtle is one of the top picks in this entire tournament to win it all. Alright, next we have Fennekin versus Scorbunny. Now, let's be very objective here first, before we get into anything subjective. Scorbunny, competitively, is quite the viable Pokemon once it's fully evolved. I just want to give it its flowers there, but... We have to look at each Pokemon and kind of how they feel as a partner, you know what I mean? Like, when you raise it to its final form, what do you feel? And to be honest, between Fennekin and Scorbunny, I'll still go with Scorbunny. While I do love the concept of a fire fox and not talking about the browser, it's kind of overdone at this point. Scorbunny is kind of unique and I loved the character it brought to an otherwise kind of mediocre game. It also is pretty fun to use, especially when you're blitzing through all of the gym leaders in that game. Now I definitely could see why some people would choose Fennekin and honestly, I almost did, but I'm gonna go with Score Bunny here. Now we have Bulbasaur versus Sobble. Now to be honest, this isn't really close. I mean, everyone knows how iconic Bulbasaur is. But Sobble, I mean, I guess it's kind of cute. It's a little basic, but I don't know. Maybe some people would choose Sobble over Bulbasaur. I'm not one of them. Okay, now this is actually one of my favorite matchups here. We have Chimchar versus Sprigatito. First of all, I love the design of both of these Pokemon. Chimchar is my favorite out of any of the starters in Gen 4, spoiler alert. And Sprigatito is also my favorite out of all the starters in Scarlet and Violet. First of all, I love the designs of both of these Pokemon. Chimchar is one of my favorite of all time, and Sprigatito is a surprising new favorite for me. And it's such a shame I have to get rid of one of these now, because I actually really love how cute Sprigatito is, and you know, Chimchar is, well, let's just say all around, competitively and aesthetically one of my favorite Pokemon. So with that being said, no shade to Scarlet and Violet for their starters, because I think they are quite good, but uh, I don't know, Chimchar just has that good feel to him. Alright, another tough matchup for me. So this is Cyndaquil versus Oshawott, and let me tell you, both of these are my first picks in their respective games. Cyndaquil is cute and competitively viable, I mean what more could you ask for? Cyndaquil is a fan favorite of course, and Oshawott is one of those starters that just feels, I don't know, kinda cute? It's cool to see how Oshawott turns from one of these clumsy little starter cute Pokemon into one of the most badass ones in Samurott. Contrasting that with Cyndaquil, it's a little bit more basic than Oshawott actually. It doesn't transform that much in appearance, it essentially just gets bigger. This is a pick that actually could go either way for me because I love both of these Pokemon so much. And I think I might be a little bit biased here considering I just completed a live stream playthrough of Pokemon Black on my channel. Eh, I think I gotta go with Oshawott here. Alright, now we have a quick battle of Gen 7 early on in the tournament. We have Litten versus Rowlet. These are both huge fan favorites in the community. I mean, their final forms are really, really good competitively, and they also look sick. Incineroar is so good, he actually made it into Smash Bros, which, you know, hey, Rowlet can't say the same about that. Yes, these are really basic for starters, and you know, to be fair, most of the starters are basic. So, I think some people might prefer Rowlet just because of how cool its final form is, but I don't know, Litten is... It's my pick. All right, with this one, we have Tepig versus Poplio. Now, considering we just went over the other Generation 7 starters, I have to say Poplio is my least favorite. Not saying it's bad or anything, but I just prefer the other two. And I think I actually have kind of a unique take on Tepig. I know some people really like it, but I don't know. It just never really resonated with me. Not particularly because of its base form. I actually really like Tepig. Embor, though, it just kind of seems strange to me. Its design didn't seem as cool as something like Samurott. But to be honest, between these two, I actually do prefer Tepig. It just seems, I don't know, a little bit more cheery and unique. Alright, so we now have Fuecoco and 
Torchic. So the battle of fire types commences and let me tell you, this is a very clear winner for me. If this list was just its base form, I think Fuecoco would win, honestly, but it's not. This list, and perhaps I should have said this earlier, is the culmination of the starter as a whole. It's its final evolution too, it's not just the starter. As cool as Torchic is in its final form, it does kind of lack in its early stages. On the other hand, Fakoko kind of looks silly, and I know some people really like Fakoko's final form. For me though, come on. I mean, Blaziken? How do you beat that? Blaziken is arguably one of the coolest starters of all time, if not the best at one point. So I gotta give it to Torchic here. Squirtle versus Scorbunny. Now, it's really hard to say without some form of nostalgia here. Scorbunny is really cool and Squirtle, very iconic. I really want to talk about design here though. Squirtle is literally just a turtle. There's nothing too crazy here. Scorbunny, it feels unique. Like it's a bunny, right? But it actually looks like it has personality. Squirtle is, again, just a turtle that squirts. So as much as I'd love to keep the Gen 1 hype going, Squirtle, I just don't feel like is as cool as Scorbunny. Okay, this is a really difficult one. Now we have Bulbasaur versus Chimchar. Look, Bulbasaur is one of the best options in Gen 1. It brought so much to the table when you were going against the first two gym leaders, Brock and Misty. And for me, I wasn't much of a Bulbasaur guy, but retrospectively, I think it really deserves more credit. Chimchar, on the other hand, also has something unique about it. It was around in a generation that didn't have many fire types, and that's why I value it so much. Having Chimchar in your party is like so unique because you can't get anything like it. In generation one, there are plenty of grass types, but in gen four, there's like three fire types in the game. So unfortunately, as cool as Bulbasaur is, I just can't take it over Chimchar. Okay, now we have Oshawott versus Litten. Now this is an interesting one. So as I said, I really, really love Oshawott in both its first and final form, but I also like Litten in its first and final form. So which one am I gonna pick? I think I'm actually gonna go with Oshawott here. And let me explain, as great as Incineroar is, I don't know, it just, to get to Incineroar, you kind of have to get through two awkward stages of Pokemon that, eh, they're just not as good as Oshawott and Duwat, in my opinion. I also feel like the transition from Oshawott into Samurott makes a lot more sense than Litten into Incineroar. It really is a struggle for me to get rid of Litten too, because I love professional wrestling and that's what they based Incineroar off of, so I don't know, but Oshawott it is. All right, now we have Tepig versus Torchic. It's kind of an easy one for me. Obviously, since I'm taking final forms into account, Blaziken is going to give Torchic a pretty strong push here. But you know, Tepig is nothing bad. It, it's, it's really just unfortunate that it had to go against Torchic here, but this is what I'm going with. All right, now we have Scorbunny versus Chimchar. So this might get a little heated. As great as Scorbunny is in both its first, second, and final form, Chimchar also is that good. I already explained why I think Chimchar is so good, especially in its own generation, but you can't ignore how good Scorbunny is too. I don't know, it just really reminds me of that old Pokemon vibe where your starter just felt like a friend to you. Scorbunny has that type of energy. Now, with that being said, I just can't put Scorbunny over Chimchar. It's such an iconic Pokemon. Its final form is amazing. That's my pick. And Oshawott versus Torchic. Look, I love Oshawott. I love Samurott. But is Samurott as good as Blaziken? I don't know. It's, it's close. It's close. I mean, first, let's look at them in their base forms. Torchic is basic. It, it's, it's a fire chick. It's not a fire chicken yet, but uh, eh. when I look at Oshawa, I'm like, what really is it? Like, it's obviously like an otter situation, but it feels like a unique design. Like, I've never seen anything like Oshawa in the game before. Torchic is, I don't know. It just doesn't feel like it has as much character. And perhaps this comes down to Gen 5 introducing unique animations for when you send out Pokemon. It's honestly a pretty big factor. But Torchic is just, I don't know, it doesn't have that. But in their final forms, Blaziken, I mean, just take a look at it in 3D. Blaziken is awesome. Its animations are sick. Samurott, it, it's cool, but it feels a little awkward, if that makes sense. It's, it's huge, but it's kind of clunky. Blaziken is like fast and efficient. And that's why I'm going to go with Torchic here. I think its potential brings it up. While Oshawott is 
very, very close. I just, I can't take it over Torchic. And finishing off this first half, we have Chimchar versus Torchic. Look, I don't know, this is hard. Infernape, obviously, amazing, amazing Pokemon. And Blaziken, well, I just spoke about how great it is too. If you ask me, just by design, what is the best like base form starter, I really will take Chimchar nine times out of 10 over Torchic. I mean, just look at the pictures. There's so much of a divide between the creativity that you can tell went into Chimchar versus Torchic. I feel like Infernape has a lot more detail to it compared to Blaziken, maybe not in its mega form, but I don't know. I think all in all considered, Chimchar is the best out of this side. All right, moving on to the next side, we have Quaxly versus Froakie. You know, I really don't like these being matched up so early because I actually love both of their designs. Quaxley is just like, I don't know, a handsome duck, but it looks really unique and I love it. But Froki is, I don't know, it, it, it also has that unique feel. It's a frog, but it looks, I don't know, it, it looks different. It's not just a standard frog. And when I consider both of their potentials, I feel like Froki being Greninja is just like, wow, you can't beat that. Greninja is like, one of the best starters, period. Now I gotta say, Quaquavel, Quick Qu Qu I think that's the, the final form of Quaxley. It's also really cool. I would not be mad if anyone took it over Froakie's form. But look, maybe I got nostalgia coming up because they announced the, the Gen 6 new games, but I'm gonna take Froakie here. All right, look, this is pretty easy. It's Chikorita versus Totodile. In my first playthrough of Pokemon Heart Gold Soul Silver, I did actually pick Chikorita, but Objectively, I think Totodile is just better in every way. Like, yeah, I can't really come up with the reason why I would take Chikorita over Totodile. Why am I getting a finals matchup in the first round? Oh my God. Okay, guys, I need you to not be mad at me with whatever I pick here. These two should be in the finals. Like this is one and two in this side, probably. Okay, we, we all know how good Charmander is. Oh, Charizard. Great. Amazing. Perfect. But I don't think you guys know how good Mudkip was. Like, maybe you do, but I just played through Pokemon Emerald and Mudkip is just like galaxies better than I feel like the other two options. I I'll give it to the final forms. Blaziken probably has it there. But Mudkip in its base, like this is iconic. Look how derpy it looks. It's so cute. Then again, so is Charmander. But okay. Okay. Look. My first time I ever played Pokemon was Pokemon Fire Red, and I picked Charmander. So this is pure nostalgia pick. I'm going with Charmander, dude. Flip a coin any day of the week. I'm taking Mudkip. Right now, I'm feeling Charmander. Please don't hurt me. All right, Trico versus Piplup. This actually is pretty easy for me. I'm a big fan of Piplup. It's my second favorite in the fourth generation. And I think it's starter form and it's final form are both really awesome. Empoleon is one of my favorite Pokemon. So, you know, Piplup. All right, another battle of grass types here. We have Turtwig versus Snivy. I'm gonna go out and say, I am a part of the Turtwig hater club. Not a real big fan of how it looks or its final form. Snivy, while I didn't like it at first, I kind of like how it looks. It, it looks very conniving, like it's like it's plotting against you. And um, I like how sassy it looks too. So I'm picking Snivy. All right, next we have Froakie versus Totodile. I know a lot of people are gonna be mad about this, but I think there is a clear winner here. I love Feraligator's concept, but I can't get over the mental image of Feraligator having a butt. I, I just can't forget about that. And when I compare that to Froki and its final form, Greninja is one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. It's probably in my top five. I just can't take Totodile over Froki for me. It's just, eh, you know what I mean? All right, now we have Charizard versus Piplup. I think I'm gonna get more people mad, but I still gotta say Charizard. Charizard, it's, it's going, it might, it might be going all the way. All right, Snivy versus Grookey. All right, so this is a, a little bit of a, of a, controversial one, I feel, because there's a lot of collectives who really like Snivy and really like Grookey. Although they are probably a little bit more unpopular amongst the general fan base, I feel like I'm gonna anger a few people. Look, I'm a Gen 5 guy. I'm, I'm not really a Gen 8 guy. And I feel like that's just what divides it here. I'm gonna take Snivy. I'm sorry. All right, here, it's a rough matchup because you are comparing very basic starter Pokemon, honestly. Froakie's nothing too crazy and neither is Charmander. But when I look at their final forms, Charizard. And then we have Greninja. 
these are both sick. I don't know which one to pick, to be honest with you. I remember watching the anime and seeing like Ash Greninja, and I'm like, oh, that's awesome. But then in the show, like Charizard is really cool too in his own way. And then in the games, you can use Ash Greninja, but you can also get like Mega Charizard X and Y. And 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 I think Mega Charizard X was like the one with the blue flames coming out. You know, I'm picking I'm picking Charizard. That was sick. I remember that. I'm picking that. Yep. I'm still I'm still going with Charmander here. I'm I'm still going with Charmander. Sorry, Snivy. He's too good. All right. Bam. This this is a finals that I definitely would have predicted. We have. Chimchar versus Charmander. A lot of charring going on here. Their final forms, both amazing. I mean, if we look at Chimchar, his final form, Infernape. Like, iconic Pokemon in the game and in the anime. So unique for its region. But then we have Charmander. This is like, this is one of the Pokemon that like, even if you show someone who doesn't know about the franchise, they're gonna like recognize him. And to add on to that, the Mega for Charizard is so cool. It, it might be the coolest one. I don't really think that Infernape can can actually defeat defeat a Mega Charizard in in any way. You know, I feel like this is a little bit unfair. I'm comparing a Pokemon that has a Mega Evolution to one that doesn't. But like, imagine Infernape with the Mega Evolution. I think that that is a situation where I'm like, okay, Chimchar, his potential can be anything, anyone on this list. Infernape with the Mega? Can you imagine that? Like, like. I can't, even, I can't even picture how good it would be competitively and like visually too. But that being said, Charmander is just like, he's, he is the guy. Well, I guess it can be the girl too, but hey. Look, I'm gonna go ahead and pick Charmander. Charmander is my winner. I love this Pokemon so much. And every time I play through Fire Red, this is the pick, this is the pick I go with. I just love Charmander so much. Every time I play through Gen 1, this this is the Pokemon I pick. Because it's just, it's so iconic. It's it's good. This certainly is a situation where I think that Chimchar is definitely deserving of winning this. Like, in another list, in another day, I think Chimchar wins this whole thing. Because I love it. Obviously got a shout out to Froki and Oshawott because I feel like those could have made it up here too. But hey, I put the link to this tournament in the description. So why don't you make your own list and let me know what you guys did because I'm really curious. Am I being kind of gen one biased? Maybe I am. Let me know. Anyway, if you could please like the video, it would mean so much to me. And uh, if you could subscribe as well so you don't miss any future uploads, it'd be awesome. And watch any of these videos here because I think you'll really like them.